It is always a privilege to be here. Thank you, Pastor Gary, for that introduction, although the guy you introduced is really older than I am. Wow. You are extraordinary. What a beautiful crowd this morning. How many love the presence of God? Now, do you understand the power of your words? Words have the ability to instantly change the atmosphere. Are you ever in a situation that it's tense and difficult, and all of a sudden you open your mouth and just begin to speak words, and everything changes? When Adam breathed, when God breathed into Adam the breath of life, we think that God took a breath of this air, which he doesn't breathe, and breathed that into Adam. He breathed into Adam the ability to speak and create atmosphere. Wherever you're at, at any moment, you have the ability with your words to change the atmosphere and then release the prophetic in your future. Now, before I go any further in this service, I want everyone in this room, I know there's no music, but I want you to lift both hands over your head, and I want you to take about 30 seconds to welcome God, the Holy Spirit. From the back of this place to the front, everyone lift your hands and begin to praise the name above all names. How many know God, the Holy Spirit, is in this house this morning? He's here right now. We praise you, God. We ask you, Holy Spirit, come, mighty, powerful, move with anointing in this place. Lord, you are worthy. Worthy of our praises. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Please open your mouth and praise him. Everyone in this room, exalt the name of Jesus. We praise you, Lord. You are worthy of our praises. Lord, let your power fill this place from the back to the front, from side to side. Let everyone know they have encountered the presence of God. And everyone shout amen. amen. Now, I w before I read scripture, I want to say a couple of things. My name is Mike French. I'm an itinerant evangelist. I'm 70 years old, and I'm a dangerous believer. Don't mess with me. I'll bless you. <laughs> I'm not to be feared by people, but I am to be feared by the powers of darkness. One year ago today, I was preaching in Brussels to 100 young leaders from all over the world, not realizing that within a few days, I would be in the hospital diagnosed to die. I was one of the first cases of COVID. The doctor in the hospital called my doctor and said he will not be going home. I had pneumonia, the flu, and covid and asthma all at the same time. I was in quarantine for seven weeks. When I came out very weak, wondering if I'd ever stand in front of any crowd again, and I lacked three days breaking the record for the longest case in the United States, and they lost my first test. In a time of fasting and praying, this is what I heard God say. Are you willing to live your next 20 years and risk it all? Can I ask you? Right now, we're in a war zone. And God is raising up dangerous people. Let me put it to you this. Do I have anyone under the age of 30 in the room today? May I say your hand, wave it at me? Do I have a dangerous believer who'll just kind of shout at me under the age of 30? That's sweet. Do I have a man in this room? You're not afraid of demons or the devil or darkness, and you're a dangerous believer. Would you shout out amen? Mm, I saved the best to last. Do I have a Holy Ghost wow woman in this place that knows the power of God, is not afraid that greater is he that is in you than he? Come on. Is there a woman in this room? Come on. Shout unto God. Take your Bibles and turn with me as you remain standing to the book of Colossians, please. Colossians, the first chapter, verse number 27. I believe we are in one of those moments of history that we will be held eternally accountable as believers for what God is doing. I believe every door of hearts all over the world. There are places right now in Europe like Germany. East Germany is the most concentrated level of atheists on planet Earth. 
And for the first time in history, 47% of that population is interested in spiritual things. How many of you have been through a year that you need the power of God to show up and show off? May I see your hands? I want you to see these words. Colossians 1 verse 27. These are the foundational words of all of Paul's teaching. Everything Paul teaches can be traced to this verse of Scripture, the foundation. Colossians 1 verse 27. To them God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is, now please get these words, Christ in you, the hope of glory. If you can, can you bring up the next slide, please? I want you to say this with me out loud. Everyone say, by the blood of the Lamb, we are forgiven. We are overcomers. We have abundant life. We can do all things through Christ. He strengthens us. Father, give us wisdom. Lord, thank you for a crowd that's with me all the way. <laughs> I bless them in your name. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. You may be seated. Just before I begin with the word, let me mention to you, in the back there is a table, and on that table there are three books. The first book is from Dr. Rick Freeman. It's called, It's Only a Test. I was preaching for Dr. Freeman. I love him. He's a very dear friend. And uh, he gave me a copy of this, and I went home and read it and, said, and called and asked him if I could carry it. I think it's that important. How many of you know you want to pass the test? Are any of you overachievers like me? I want to win in every level of life. You, absolutely. It's a wonderful book you want to pick up. The second one I carry is from an unknown author from a little place called Cape Girardeau, Dr. Gary Brothers. And, and, and with it, we are constantly out of this book. If you don't have a copy of this or one of, how many of you know your pastor is a preaching, writing machine? Love he and Rose with all of our hearts. But then there's also created to believe. One day while I was studying because I was trying to write my first book and I, I sat down with ideas and different things and I began to see these words from the book of John. These things are written that you might believe. Do you realize what you believe determines your faith? What you believe determines your love. Everything in the kingdom of God doesn't start with love. It doesn't start with hope. It doesn't start with faith. It starts with what you believe. When you understand that what you read and who you know determine your future. People all the time say, preacher, give me a word, and I'll look at them and say, tell me who you're hanging out with. Tell me what you're reading. Everything changes if we have time between the services. We'll go out and sign books. Please come by and say hi, if at all possible. This morning, for the next few moments, I want to speak to you on dangerous believers. Everyone out loud say that, dangerous believers. Now, everyone say dangerous believers. I want to introduce you to one of my friends from Russia. I know you brought it up a minute ago. Can you bring up Pastor Sergey? Now, this is Pastor Sergey, and we're in a place, um, uh, how do I explain to you uh, Chelyabinsk, Russia? Chelyabinsk, Russia is the number one place on planet Earth for cancer and tuberculosis. There are three nuclear disasters there. It's one of the most contaminated places in the world, and yet most people don't even know about it. Uh, Pastor Bishop Edward one day asked me if I would go there and plant a church, and I said, uh, I don't think so. How many of you are smart enough to stay away from contamination? And he said, well, there's a city there that has no believers, no churches, and there are one million people. Process that. And I said, uh, uh, well, why would we? He said, well, you know, there have been three nuclear disasters there. It was the place for us older people that Gary Powers was shot down over trying to spy on. And, and I went, uh, if you'll find somebody to go there and plan it, I'll go. Well, then I found out that God had built a brand new Holiday Inn there for me. <laughs> so we go, and this is me meeting with him, and and so I and that's his his baby boy, and his wife wasn't there that day. She'd just given birth to a baby girl. 
How many are you ready to sign up to go to one of those contaminated regions on planet Earth? And I said to him, I said, Sergey, explain to me why you're here. And he said, well, what do you mean? I said, go online. Have you read about where you are? It's obvious you're intelligent, you're smart. And he says, Bishop Edward didn't tell you my story. Did Can I tell you right front? That's a dangerous believer. You go, well, what do you mean? Well, he's the oldest of eight children. His father died when he was 18 years old. His father had abused physically and sexually all eight children. Died of acute alcoholism. At his funeral, no one was there. They were in a small village except for the family. He said no one cried, and everyone was happy he was gone. We moved out of there into a community that was larger, hoping I could find a job and support my family, 18 years old. He said in the building we were staying in, in the apartments, there were two families that were doing well off, so I made them my friends. You know, I've heard pastor talk about your uh, resources are in your relationships. Well, they both taught him how to steal. By the time he was 23, he was independently wealthy and sentenced to the most harsh sentence possible. Sent to an area, he told me not only did no preachers ever come there, he said our families didn't come there. He said it was a hideous place. And out of nowhere one day, the head of the prison came in at lunch and set a box on top of one of the tables, and he said, this is come in the mail. And it was a box of Gideon New Testaments. He said, I took one of them back, and I began to read it. And, and then when I got to the end, I, I started praying the sinner's prayer, and I started crying, and then I began to lose my mind. I said, what do you mean? He said, I started speaking in a language I didn't understand. I'd never heard a message. I'd never been a part of anything. I, I knew nothing about God. He said, I'm going to read through here again, and if there's nothing like this, I'm going to commit suicide. He said, I began to read that day after Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John under total, constant oppression. He said, I, I began to read when the day of Pentecost was fully come. They were gathered together in an upper room. There came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all of the house where they were sitting. There appeared unto them divided tongues as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And then he saw all these words, and they all began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. And they all began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. He said, I went, that's what I got. I'm not crazy. It's in the book. Within two weeks, he was removed from the prison population and made counselor of the prison. A year later, the head of the prison called him in, signed his papers and said, go home. You're a changed man. Now, the reason I show you this picture is because he's my secret weapon in Russia. He has an organization recognized by every court for feeding families. Whenever I want to go into a city and they go, no, you can't go, then all of, I'll, I'll send him. And he says, hold it, we'll feed people, we'll bless them, we'll help them, and we got this American who's going to come and tell stories. I'm not an evangelist in Russia, I'm a storyteller. How many know I got the best stories in the world about Jesus? Now, I, I want to show you one more picture. Bring up the next picture. That's him today. That's that little boy. A mighty, powerful man of God. What changed him? Christ in you. The hope of glory. We are in a supernatural season of harvest where the power of the Holy Spirit is expanding the kingdom of God by taking his people and his church to a higher level. What is happening right now is a sign and a wonder to our world of the blessing of the glory of God. The power of God is rising in us and over the people of Jehovah God. This is a prophetic indicator of God's goodness and unmerited favor. We are entering into an extraordinary season of God's forgiveness and goodness. It is giving his children a short window of opportunity before the next, next, next cataclysmic event that will hit planet Earth. Two years ago, for the first time, I wrote those words down and said, 
cataclysmic events are coming upon planet Earth. Please hear me. For those of you who think we're moving out of this and this will be in the past, the closer we come to the return of Jesus Christ to this planet, we're going to feel the convulsions of this planet saying, look up, your redemption draweth nigh. I hear the Holy Spirit saying, we must not squander this moment, but we must clearly see the power. Please hear me. God has raised up this church for this moment, for this city, for all of this part of Missouri. Why? That the world will know our God is not dead. How many know our God is alive? He's on the throne and he's able. When you see these words, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Paul is drawing our attention to the power of this statement. All of the gospel can be found, every part of the New Testament, in this statement. Christ in you, the hope of glory. He's saying, hold it, fix, fasten, pay attention with all that is within you. Now, if you want to, you can write this down. It is the law of the mind. Let me repeat that. The law of the mind. Please write this down. Whatever gets your attention gets you. And let me say all that again. The law of the mind. Whatever gets your attention gets you. If Christ gets your attention, he gets you. That may seem simple to you, but do you realize you learned this before you could talk? Yes. There you were, born. How many of you remember it? I don't remember it. Dirty diapers, hungry. How did you communicate the problem? Ah! You know why? You get mama's attention, you get mama. You're all so quiet, and I'm really trying to say something. See, when you get the attention, form, fix, focus, right now we're focused on everything. This, this, and this. Will we get back in school? Will we do this? Will we accomplish this? How is this going to work out? How did you vote? Get over yourself. Can I ask you, what gets your attention? What do you pay attention to? When God said, I want you to be a dangerous believer, I want you to be willing to risk, and I'm going, God, how much more do I need to risk? And God says, will you surrender? Will you surrender your attention to me? Will you focus on me? The greatest challenge of the church in America today is we're focused on everything but Jesus. Well, we love our pastor. How many of you love your pastor? May I see your hands? We love our church. Let me see your hands. We love our worship. Eric, you did a great job. I don't know where you are today, but mm. how many of you know be nice to kids? When they grow up, they're going to be something special. How many of you love the children's church? Let me see your hands. See, we love a pastor. We love our church. We love our staff. We love the children's department. That's not the problem. Do we love Jesus? Now, you say, oh, we do, but does he have your attention? Can I ask you, what has to happen next before he gets it? See, because once you, he has your attention He has this power, Christ in you, the hope of glory. We're living in a moment that we're running everywhere. I I don't know about Cape Girardeau, but I live in Tulsa, and I've never seen the insanity of traffic. Tulsa's this little sweet town. You can get anywhere in 30 minutes. I was in a traffic jam the other day for an hour. And I'm sitting there going, and it wasn't that I got upset, but if I spit the green grass, would have turned black. I'm going, where are you going? I've never seen anything like, everywhere you go, people going, 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 going. Now the planes are full again. 
What's this all about? Everything drawing our attention. And yet the one that we believe in, who is not dead but is alive, who is on the throne, he's Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. By his stripes I am healed. By his blood I am forgiven. Our names are written there. Please hear me today. He deserves my attention. Let let me ask you some questions today. Number one. Do you believe that Christ is in you? Now, I heard about seven yes. So that means the rest of you, it's no. Let me ask it again. Do you believe Christ is in you? Ooh, that's better. In what way does Christ in you affect your life? Now, process that. It's not just the fact that you go to church on Sunday. You know, I... One of our partners the other day called and said they, they'd moved to the part of the United States. They, they were in California. And those of you who've never been in California, I was just there a few days ago. It's, it's becoming weirder. Is that possible? And all the good people I know out there are moving out. And, and it's kind of, I, I kind of like it when people are on that edge where every moment you, you got to have the power of God. you got to wake up to that. And uh, she called and said, Michael, please pray for me. I was in a women's prayer group, and every one of them were just happy they went to church. And I said to one of them, I, to the group, she said, she said, how many of you have ever led somebody to the Lord? And she said, not one person in this group had ever led anybody to Jesus. Do you not understand where we are right now? The world out there is more ready for Jesus than you're ready for them. I've been preaching 20 minutes to say that. Everywhere you turn, I've never seen anything like it. The world wants to know. They want to know Christ in you, the hope of glory. If you believe Christ is in you, when was the last time you thanked him for it? Let me put it to you this way. When was the last time you just had a crazy praise? Anybody here thankful your sins are forgiven? Anybody here thankful you're on your way to heaven? Anybody here thankful that your name is written there? Anybody here thankful for the grace of God that found you where you were and you're not afraid to open your mouth and use it and to praise him who gave? When's the last time you just had a crazy praise? You just said, excuse me, I got to have a little break. I got to get a little excited. I'm forgiven. My sins, I'm ready to go. I don't know if I want to go today, but I'm ready to go. My name is written there. Mm, And number four, it's the why question. Why do you think Christ would want to dwell in us? I can't even fathom it. Let me give you some things to understand. First of all, the witness depends upon the presence. Christ in you, the hope of glory When someone else encounters your life, is there something so tangible that it awakens in them the hope of glory? That it's just not that people go, I don't know what it is. Where are you? Where did you come from? And the second part of that is this. There is a phrase that the world operates by. It's not in writing much, although it is. If you don't know it, there's this phrase that the world functions by, and it doesn't matter where you are in the world, it functions by this phrase. Show me the money. How many of you have ever heard that phrase before? If you don't know it, Washington operates by show me the money. Do you know who the two biggest employers are in America? The Democrats and Republicans. Never thought about it, had you? Not Wall Street. Show me the money. Everything you consider around you. I, I'm, I'm one day in Haiti, and I'm going to show you a video of something that happened there recently. But I was arguing with a lady over, over a, one of the little trinkets she had, and, and finally we came to an agreement on seven dollars. And she, I, she said, seven, and then she looked at me and said, 
show me the money. Please look at me. If you don't hear anything else today, hear this. There is a generation under the age of 30 that doesn't want you to show them the church. They want you to show them the glory. You got to get that inside of you. The world outside of you isn't impressed. Now, now let me say this. This generation is not going to get rid of their technology. They're not going to throw out their smartphones. They're, they're not going to get rid of their iPad. But they, they know technology will not deliver them from drugs. Technology will not deliver them from alcohol. Technology will not deliver them from pornography. Technology will not deliver them from anything. It'll addict them to what they are already bound by. You, you, you don't feel it. I do. As deep as anything as I understand inside of me. We are in a moment in America when it's saying to the church, don't show me a new church building. Show me the power of the glory of God that will set me free from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet. Somehow show me something that will step out and surrender the living God. How many know God is alive? Let me give you three pictures and then I'll be done. Christ in you, first of all, means you're a seed of the woman. Please write that down. The first prophetic word is Christ in you means you're the seed of the woman. When God came to deal with the devil, he said, upon your belly you shall go, dust you shall eat all, all the days of your life, and I will put hostility between her seed and your seed. What you do will scratch his heel. One day his heel will crush your head. The seed of the woman is for the healing of your feet to give you the power to crush the head of the serpent. The church of the living God in this hour is here to crush fearlessly the powers of darkness. Reach over and touch your feet and say, be healed. Can you get that video ready of, of Haiti? Uh, I, I just was in Haiti recently. This, this video is very, it's not very good, but I, I was preaching in a place called Capacia, Haiti. And this is the Thursday morning prayer meeting. This is where you see the healing of the feet. If you can at any time, click that video on. That's Pastor Ecclesius. He just passed away from COVID. Take your hands while you're watching that and touch your feet and say, be healed. Now, I want you to listen to me very carefully as you watch the end of that video. Most of you walk around with sore feet. You need your feet to get healed. What does that mean? You walk around with a hostile attitude. Do you know how many believers you meet and you can tell they've got a sore foot by the look on their face? Now, again, I want you to get, that's Thursday morning prayer meeting. Pastor Ecclesiastes said, if I'll come back on a Sunday, he'll get a crowd for me. I want you to get that down inside of you. Do you know how many of us walk around with the limp of sin mad? And it's become a part of our culture. Right now, America is limping because of the spirit of hostility. We're mad all the time. You, you, you just want to stop and go, Jesus loves you. Chill. Turn to someone next to you and go, chill. Touch your feet and say, be healed. Number two, you're of the seed of Abraham. The seed of Abraham is for the healing of your hands to bless the nations. Touch your feet and say, be healed. Now, after you touch them, kind of move your feet a little. Now, rub your hands together and say, be healed. 
The seed of Abraham is to bless these hands. I will bless the Lord at all times. Why? I'll lift holy hands without wrath or doubting. Lay hands on the sick. Our hands, our hands have become so contaminated. We want to hit. We want to slap. We want to take. Because of the anointing of God, you have the ability to bless you're of the seed of the woman. You're of the seed of Abraham. And write this down. You're of the seed of David. The first is for the healing of your feet. The second is for the healing of your hands. The third is for the healing of your heart. Christ in you means your feet have been healed. I don't know. Maybe you think I'm overthinking it. But I believe right now we're living in a nation that's hurt. Pain. And we keep looking to humans as the answer instead of focusing our attention on him who can heal our feet. We walk around hurt, our hands, our heart. For the seed of David is for the healing of the heart, for the place where God resigns. Now, I'm done. I've gone long enough. Do you have it? Now, 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 look at me. I want everybody's attention because if you don't get it, you'll miss the point. I've been putting a jigsaw puzzle together. Do you see the picture? Wounded feet, wounded hands, wounded heart. He was wounded for my transgressions. Christ in you deals with the wounds. Do you know how many marriages are wounded? How many children are wounded? In the night, can you hear the cries of the kids of Cape Girardeau? The families that are being torn apart? And right here is the answer. Because not only does he heal the feet, not only does he heal the hands and the heart, the crown of thorns is for the healing of the mind. See, everything starts in the mind. Your thoughts become your attitudes. Your attitudes become your words. Your words become your decisions. And your decisions become your actions. So that's where we'll start today. Are your thoughts right with God? See, I can do a lot of things. I can get up here and preach the word to you. But it all comes down to the fact to the law of the mind. Whatever gets your attention, gets you. See, you can be a part of a move of God. I already put it out on Facebook this morning. I love Facebook. I love Instagram. I love YouTube, all these things. What a wonderful time to be alive. But the real battle is between your ears. See, you know, I can stand up here and say, well, how many of you this week got drunk? Well, even if you did, you probably wouldn't lift your hand. But how many of you this week had some real stinking thinking? Hurts from wounded feet, wounded hands, wounded heart, wounded head. Because that becomes your attitudes. In a moment, I'm going to count to three. No heads bowed, no eyes closed. Everyone looking around. And I'm going to ask you to be honest with me and say, Michael, I got stuff going on in my head from wounds. I walk around at times limped. It's, it, once you get into that attitude of wounded feet, you don't even realize it's almost like you walk around looking for an opportunity to be mad. Instead of the fact, I surrender. I surrender my thoughts to you. And maybe you don't have to do that, but I have to do it daily. I, 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 at 70 years old, I still tend to be driven. And every morning... Lord, I surrender this day to you. Because I don't know about you, I'll take over if God let me. No, I just said, it's such a good point. I, I believe I was born to take over. And God says, surrender. Surrender your thoughts to me today. Surrender your attitudes to me today. Let them be the fruit of the Spirit. Let your words be prophetic to every person you meet. 
Let God be first in your decisions. See, if I can get you to do those four, I don't ever have to worry about pornography or alcohol or drugs or immorality. If the thoughts are right, if the attitudes are right, if the words are right, if God is first in the decisions, the fruit will always be righteousness. But do you have the courage? No heads bowed, no eyes closed. Everyone looking around say, Brother Michael, I really wish you'd quit because you're talking to me. From the very back to the front, from side to side, in a moment, I'm going to count to three. I'm going to ask everyone in this room, how many of you? Now, you may say, Brother French, I'm on my way to heaven, and, and I love God, and, 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 but I got some stuff going on in my head. It, does it bother you to, be, to lift your hand with sinners? Jesus wasn't afraid to be counted with sinners. Where is it that we've gotten where there's the holy group and there's the unholy group? There's the sick group and there's the unsick group. Any time we all realize we're all on this journey together, we got to have help from each other. We need Jesus. I'm going to count to three, and I'm going to ask how many from the back to the front. I'll lift your hand and say, Michael, i got stuff going on in my head that I need help with. I need God. I need to focus the law of the mind. i got attitudes that are wounded, hurt, hands, feet, heart, head, words. They don't bless. When I count to three, how many of you will be honest with me? Say, Michael, I need prayer today. I, you go, well, what will somebody think if I lift my hand? Does that really matter? Is there somebody here w- that you're willing to walk out the door with unrepentant things in your life because of them? Uh, now, I'm getting too old to follow you in the parking lot, so I'll send pastor. <laughs> He'll probably send somebody else, but it's all right. Do you have the courage to be honest? Every eye lifted, every eye opened, everybody looking around. I love this phrase. If your glasses are dirty, get them clean. Do you have courage enough to be honest with me and say, Michael, I want to be a dangerous believer. I, I, want, to, I want to, oh, Jesus, but I got some thoughts going on that are robbing me. Every person in this room will be honest with me right now when I count to three, lift your hand and say, I need pr-. hands are already going up. I love this church. I, before I even start counting, people start going, I, I'm not missing out on anything today, preacher. If you need prayer today, lift your hand. One, two, three. Every hand that's lifted, stand to your feet, please. Now, I, I need to ask something, Pastor. 70, 80% stood up. Am I allowed to ask people to come forward? I've been praying for people. For those of you who don't know it, I had COVID. I'm not dead. I've, I, I've, <laughs> I've had my vaccination, so if I bite you, you won't get rabies. No. <laughs> I, what I'd like to do, if you feel comfortable, and, and don't gather on top of each other. There's enough room with the aisles. Can everyone that's standing just kind of move toward the front right now? Can you just come, 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 come quickly? We're only going to pray for two minutes. Everyone put your hand on your heart. I'm going to pray for you and then I'm going to ask you to pray. Jesus, we so deeply need your presence. From the back to the front, from side to side, so many hundreds of people hungry for you, focused on you. It's so easy to get focused on everything else. We need those seasons where we are totally focused on you. Everyone out loud say, by the blood of the Lamb, We are forgiven. We are overcomers. We have abundant life. We're dangerous believers. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. I want you to lift your hands, please. 
everyone out loud say, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, you're my strength, you're my redeemer. And look at me. <laughs> yes, sir, I will, okay. <laughs> I want to ask, because there are two, there are three groups of people standing here. Those, had you died on your way to church, you'd have been in heaven 10 minutes before the devil knew you were gone. Then there are those of you who don't know. And then there are those of you that if you died on your way to church, you'd have split hell wide open because of what you did last night, this past week, the way you live. You say, preacher, I didn't do anything bad last night, but you've never received Jesus and surrendered as Lord and Savior. I'm going to count to three, and I'm going to ask how many of you will lift a hand and say, Michael, I don't know if I'm right with God. Michael, I'm lost. Will you have enough courage right now throughout this building? How, is it just me? Is it just on the platform? How many sense the Holy Spirit in this room right now? All over this place. I'm going to ask, I'll count to three one more time, but I'm going to ask everyone in this room who will say, Michael, I'm not right with God, or I don't know if I'm right with God and I'm lost, and I believe there are several. How many of you here right now will have enough courage to say, I don't care who sees it. I know that I'm not right with God in that I'm not sure or I'm lost, and you'll have courage enough to be honest with me this moment. Holy Spirit, you're speaking to people all across this room. Several who are lost, who are backslidden, who've run away from God. And Lord, there are those here who don't know. Every person in this room will be honest with me right now and say, Michael, I'm lost or I don't know if I'm right. I want you to lift your hand right now. One, two, three, lift it up. Oh, hands are going up everywhere. Wow. There's got to be at least two or three dozen hands lifted. Father, set free in the name of Jesus. Set free by the power of God's blood. From the top of your head to the bottom of your feet, I break the strongholds. Lord, we're entering the season of tearing down the strongholds of darkness. And by your grace, amen. Pastor Gary, would you please come? Thank you. Let's just stay. Let's just stay in an atmosphere just to worship the Lord just a minute here, okay? Ever how you want to do that, if you want to close your eyes or, or you don't. I believe the Holy Spirit will just speak a, a word. He's already spoken an incredible word here. We'll show our appreciation in just a minute. But right now, let's just stay focused on the presence of of the Lord. There's a prayer that I pray every day. I pray it every Sunday morning with staff when we pray. Lord, trust us one more time with your word, your people, your presence, and your power. Because without the presence of God, we won't have the power of God. The word of the Lord says, in his presence is fullness of joy. It's in his presence that our thought life is purged. It's in his presence where sins are forgiven. It's in his presence where hope is restored, where life is given, where self-esteem is renewed. It's in his presence where truth abounds. So just right now, let's, let's just be in his presence. Just welcome his presence in your life. Father, we welcome you, Lord. We welcome you, Lord. Holy Spirit, minister life. Minister life this morning. Not only here, but those that are watching through a media outlet, minister life. 
very rarely do this, but I feel so impressed by the Holy Spirit that someone watching right now through our media outlets, that you're contemplating suicide. You've already planned it out. In your mind, you, you, you've, already, you've already planned it out. But God ordained that you watch this today. In the battlefield that's going on between your ears, the enemy has developed a stronghold. But yet he doesn't have you completely because you're still alive. Right now, right where you are, I want you to simply say, Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me change me and break the stronghold over my mind. Pray that right now. Jesus, forgive me. Break the stronghold over my life. And you're not going to commit suicide. And you're going to live a productive life, become a dangerous Christian. Redemption is flowing in your life right now. He's flowing in your life right now right now you're experiencing I can see you in my mind's eye right now weeping right there where you are that's okay let it go let it go just turn it over to Jesus right now forget what people have told you and the lies they've said about you just turn it over to Jesus right now let's just thank the Lord right now Lord we thank you we bless you we praise you we thank you Lord we thank you Lord we thank you Thank you for touching hearts this morning, God. Thank you for releasing your power and your grace right now. Thank you, Lord. You know, someone else watching right now or some of you standing right here could say, well, he could make all that up. Make it sound like he's super spiritual and he's seeing something from the Lord and just talking to the cameras and who, how do we know there's somebody watching? He just make all that stuff up and yeah, I could. I could. But I have this little thing on the inside of me called the fear of the Lord. And I'm not playing with God's glory and God's righteousness. And so you can believe it or not, but there's someone right now, they're weeping right now. The Lord has touched them and changed them because of the word they heard from this evangelist this morning in the presence of the Most High God. Right now. Right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah. How many of you want to be dangerous Christians? Not dangerous drivers. Dangerous Christians. Okay. You're dangerous to the kingdom of hell. I want to have a dangerous church. How about you? I want to have a place where people can experience the presence of God. The real deal. That's what I want. It's what we have, by the way. It's what we have. It's what we have. How many of you glad about that? How many glad you came today? Let's, let's let evangelist Michael French know how much appreciated his word this morning.